Hi, guys. Welcome back to the podcast. Happy Wednesday or whenever you were brought here. Thanks for being here. So since we talked last and since Nick was here last, we got engaged. We got engaged on Saturday, December 4th. And obviously with things like that, there's always tons of questions and you know, people want to know how he did it or how he wanted to do it and certain things like that. So we decided we'll just do a whole podcast kind of centered around our engagements. And then we're going to get into, I asked everyone on Instagram what their best piece of advice or biggest thing that they learned from planning a wedding. Because I don't know about you guys, but I don't know where to begin. I don't know what the first step is. All I knew is that I want to spend the rest of my life with him. So that wasn't the question, but a matter of planning the wedding or what our perfect wedding would be is daunting. So I will be probably talking about this a lot for the next year, (laughs) Um, but I think it's going to be a really fun time and I'm excited to share with you guys on this journey. So Nick, welcome back. How are you feeling after that really big decision you made and after that huge day? How are you feeling now? Uh, Pretty relieved actually. Yeah. One of the more nerve wracking things that I've ever done. How, in a good way. I mean, how long would you say that you were stressed out for about the actual engagements? Because sometimes I felt like you might have been stressed and you said it was about work or things like that, but it could have been about the engagement. So how long do you think you were holding on to that It was mostly stress? about the engagement. Yeah. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just, um, I mean, I take that very seriously. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a big step in your life and you want to make sure everything goes off without a hitch and that you're surprised. So yeah. Holding on to that information, uh, it was difficult. It was very difficult. Yeah. (laughs) And sometimes I was asking you about like how you're going to do it and wanting to see the ring and things like that. And you were like, well, I could show you right now if you wanted. You kept like teasing me throughout the whole process. So I do want to get into like your thought process behind it and how good you are at lying because it's a little (laughs) scary um, how much he was able to keep under wraps because I – was shocked by the the actual time of the engagement. I had my I had my feelings like it could happen, but the day of I was actually shocked. So, we'll get into all of that, but before we do. So, first of all, there people have different ways that they go about getting engaged and everyone's different and everyone is deserves and should have their own journey with that. But for me personally, when it came to deciding on what the ring was, I wanted to be involved in that. And I know most girls or some heavily. girls heavily involved. Um, I know some girls wanted to want to be surprised or like hope that their fiance p- picks out the perfect ring. Um, but I was not one of those people. No. <laughs> and I don't know which, well, I don't know what's worse. Having your significant other completely surprised and kind of takes away, I don't know, takes away the stress of them not liking it Mm -hmm. because you don't know what they want to begin with. Yeah. So you're just hoping they'll be happy that you're going to be getting engaged or you have your significant other significantly involved like this one (laughs) and you know exactly what they want and they know, they know that you know exactly (laughs) what they want. So it puts a lot of pressure on you to deliver exactly what they want and only exactly what they want. But on the other hand, if you get them a ring that they basically design themselves, then you know that they're going to love it and they're going to love it for because the, they're going to be wearing it the rest of their life. So yeah. I think there's two schools of thought when it comes to the engagement ring process. Yeah. So I was heavily involved. And I think it's funny because I feel like some people almost lie about their involvement in, in picking out their ring because I always thought by looking at people getting engaged, like I always just assumed, oh, they were surprised. They just were happy with the ring. I never thought about the involvement that I actually would have when it came down to the process of it. So this is how it went for me. Um, I didn't really know anything about rings or designers or different types of diamonds. I really wasn't that involved yet. I think I just didn't let myself start researching that way. I didn't want to jump the gun too soon because I didn't even have a boyfriend for most of my life. So I wasn't looking into diamonds. But when the time came, I went with his sister-in-law, Ashley, and we went to a really cool diamond store, jewelry store in Cincinnati. It's Genesis for 
those that are in Cincinnati. But we went there and I got to try on a few rings and just basically figure out what I wanted. Obviously, you want a really big diamond and obviously you want it to be very sparkly, but I didn't really know the shape, the color, any of that. So what I learned from going there, I was like, okay, I liked the three stone. I really liked the oval because it made it look bigger. And I was toying between rose gold and gold because sometimes I get nervous with how yellow gold can look if it looks too yellow. I'm very so, – so here's the thing. I didn't know what I wanted, but I knew what I wanted. <laughs> so I gathered that I needed those things. So I wanted a three stone ring and I really liked – for example, I'll just show it to you. I lo- really liked the three stone. And then most of the ones that I saw, there were no extra diamonds on the side. And I just figured that it would look lovely if three stones went into a wrap of diamonds around my finger. I just thought that would st- be so beautiful. So I kind of imagined that in my head and figured that was an easy task. Like, obviously, you could just add a couple more diamonds because the Genesis lady that was helping us was like, yeah, we can tailor make anything that you pick out. We can add or remove things, anything you want. So I was like, obviously, you can just add more diamonds to a ring. So then I, from there, I showed Nick a couple pictures of the the things that I liked and then thought, okay, well, I'll show him those pictures and then he can pick it out from there. But again, I have no chill. So then I wanted to find the exact copy of what I was looking for to give him an exact example of the ring I wanted. So then I spent weeks on Pinterest, hours of time at night while he was asleep, just looking through photos and photos. And you will go and deep, dark holes of looking through stuff. So I finally realized that the thing I wanted didn't actually really exist, upsetting. So then I went back with Ashley and we decided to get creative and we went on Canva and literally photoshopped pictures of two rings together and created a ring. And that's what I handed to Nick. And I was like, here, go figure out how to make this in gold. I was relieved that you knew what you wanted and I just had to go find that However, the more that I started digging and like looking at rings, the more I realized, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to find this and it's probably going to cost me quite a bit to have it made. So that's kind of where the stress starts coming into play. Engagement aside, the ring itself was enough to send me into a tailspin for a number of weeks. Yeah, where I was feeling relief because I I had the physical representation of exactly what I wanted, so I could show him, have him figure it out. It then all the stress went onto him and actually making that happen, which we got there. So we we, we were very lucky, and when we were looking, you had Takori actually reach out to you about helping you design a ring and mm-hmm. like helping you figure that out. And we had actually heard of Takori because his sister in law's ring is from then, mm-hmm. from, and they're uh, like a boutique jeweler in, out of Los Angeles. And if you guys don't know about them, definitely look into them if you're looking for an engagement ring because they're pretty well known. They're pretty well known, but now I did, me not knowing anything about diamonds, I didn't really know about them until this process. But they reached out to you, and then how did that like whole process go with them? Honestly, I couldn't ask for a better process. Um, so they reached out to me. Um, I took a phone call with one of their, uh, I, I believe she is basically the social media manager for Takori. And she, you know, took me step by step, you know, how this is, this is what we can do. This is how it'll work. This is what you're looking at as far as the lead time, like extremely helpful. Um, basically the only thing that I could say was, uh, you know, this all sounds great. You know, I appreciate you reaching out to me, but like if the only thing that matters to me is that we get Sydney exactly what she wants. And I was like, unfortunately I know exactly what you want. So she was like, perfect. That's, that's, you know, that's easy for us. So why don't you just send me some pictures? And I was like, I can actually send you the picture. It was Photoshopped. (laughs) And the closer we get to this, the better. And she was like, awesome. So I sent her the Photoshop pic. Um, I think a couple days later, she sent me some different options. So essentially what they were going to do is take, since they didn't have the, the kind of the setting and the layout that she wanted, um, it didn't in exist. stock, it didn't <laughs> exist. So they're like, what we can do is we can take a setting from one of the rings, the three stone setting, and the band that you like with the diamonds on the band, and we can basically merge those two together. Mm-hmm. And she, she was like, and it's going to be pretty close to the picture that you that you sent us. And I was like, awesome, let's go with that. So she sent me up some, some pictures of what it would kind of look like. Um, and I was like, that's great. Let me just get my sister-in-law to sign off on it because Ashley was... Instrumental in in helping me 
kind of navigate myself through this because obviously it's my first time and I know nothing about engagement rings or really jewelry to begin with. So basically from there, you know, we went into a CAD drawing phase where they made sure that I, we were okay with the two different types of rings that they were going to put together. Looked great. Gave them the go ahead. They sent us the CAD drawings. CAD drawings came back and Ashley kind of threw a wrench into things and was like, <laughs> I think the band is a little bit too wide. She wanted a little bit more of a delicate band. And I was terrified to go back to the quarry because they had told me like, hey, before we send it to CAD for the drawings and whatnot, uh, let's just be really sure we this is what we want because it's it's an expensive process to have those images put together. Mm -hmm. So I was terrified to go back to them. And as soon as I did, they're like, oh, yeah, no problem. We'll make the right. We'll make the changes and then we'll send it back to you. And and we'll just keep doing this until you're able to sign off on it. So that makes me very happy to hear because this is such a special time in our lives. And I'm anyone that's going through this process and the most that someone can streamline the process is incredible. And we did look at like one or two other brands and showed them the Photoshop photo and they were like, well, we can't do that, but we can show you something similar. So that Takori was the only one that was like, yeah, we can do that. No problem. And they're just like really good at what they do. So yeah, they're amazing. Yeah. I, mean, I, I can't say enough good things. And no one's paying us to say that. We honestly are just so happy yeah. with the experience. No that, free ads, but no, free ads. Yeah, yeah. I was really nervous about the whole engagement thing and then like getting the same thing that I wanted, but it was just unreal. So once I knew that Nick was, I mean, I didn't know the process was necessarily happening. I just knew that he was working with Decor and that's the last I had heard of it. But again, I have psychosis. And even though I designed the ring, even though I was very happy with the photo I created, I still was obsessing over it. So <laughs> throughout this whole time, once since I created the image, I would constantly double check the image, keep searching on Pinterest to see if there was anything similar so I could see exactly what it would look like because it's so different from seeing a picture than actually seeing it in person. If you guys see our dog, I'm just sorry, but we can't control her. She's having, she's parkouring on our couch right now. Got the zoomies. She got big zoomies. She's trying to get some dinner, but. Like I even got to the point on Canva where I was Photoshopping the ring onto my hand. So I was like full blown obsession. And I will say, even though I was very involved in like the choosing of the engagement room, like picking everything out, I still was shocked actually seeing it in person. It's a whole different experience seeing it in person. And I was nervous that it wasn't going to be exactly what I wanted in person. So I have issues and I can't even imagine with how obsessed I was with just picking out the ring, how I'm going to be actually wedding planning. Cause I can be very chill until I have a task and that I'm very unchill. Hmm. So that'll be fun. I'm sure. But Let's get to the actual proposal because I was not involved in that. I did not pick out how I got engaged to well, that. You I kind of be. did. <laughs> well, I did, but not not to my knowledge. Yes, with Sydney basically already picking out her ring to an extent, and that not really being a surprise of what it would look like. Um, the only surprise that was left is the actual surprisal of when and how the proposal would go down. So. If you know anything about our relationship, if you're close to us, you know that I don't plan anything. I have not a say in really anything that we do or anything that goes on, especially on our weekends. But I think you prefer that. No, I, I do, but, okay. but it makes it that much harder to plan a proposal when the other person has basically a separate planner dedicated to the things that we do as a couple and obligations. <laughs> so... That was going to be another stressful deal for me. What I came up with was what's one place or one event that Sydney would not suspect anything because it's something that I don't really enjoy. <laughs> and if you know me or if you think you know me because you watch Sydney's Instagram stories or listen to the podcast, you'd think that I didn't enjoy a whole lot. So it'd be easy. But the one thing that I really don't enjoy is taking pictures. <laughs> And photo shoots. So I thought, what a better way to not only surprise her because she wouldn't see it coming, but for, for her to basically pick how she would be getting proposed to, like location, time of day, you know, what she was wearing. So I reached out to a photographer, Kate, Tony, with the Citrus Collection, who I if you her. haven't looked at her stuff, I would I would definitely I would definitely reach out to her. She's awesome. She's yeah. in Cincinnati. She's great. Yeah. She's can't say enough High good class, things about very her. Very chill. Yeah. Awesome. Very, great person to hang out yeah, with. She's great. 
So I reached out to her and I was like, hey, I would like for you to be part of Sydney and I's engagement. Would you be would you be down for that? And she immediately texted me back and was like, absolutely. Like, I'm, oh my God, this is the most exciting thing I want to be doing all year. <laughs> and I was like, sweet. So we got the approval, for, we got the okay from her. Um, I was like, here's what I, th- here's what I'm thinking. I think you reach out to Sydney and try to set up a photo shoot. That's basically how we got to know Kate in the first place. She reached out to Sydney, like slid in her DMs, just like I did. She reached out to Sydney. They started planning this photo shoot, you know, oh, we're going to do Christmas E pictures, you know, we're going to be doing it at this park on this time of day. So Sydney, the whole time I'm working behind the scenes with Kate, Kate's saying, all right, I'm going to come to her with like three options and let her pick. Here's the three options. Are you cool with that? Yes. Sign off of it. Sign off in it. I get home from work. Sydney's like, so we're going to be doing a photo shoot. It's the, it's going to be on this day. And these are the three parks that we have to choose from. I think I'm going to choose this one. What do you think? And I have to act like, <laughs> I don't care. Like whatever, do it wherever we want. I don't care. Basically, Sydney thought that she had come up with this entire photo shoot and day and time and place and all that when in reality I was working behind the scenes to kind of set it up with the photographer. So I think it worked out really well. The last thing was I wanted to somehow incorporate our journal that we kept um, between each other when we were doing long distance. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you're not familiar with that, I would write in the journal, I'd give it to her the next time we hung out. She would read my entry write me something. And then when she came back to Cincinnati, she would leave the journal with me. I'd read it, you know, and then that's kind of how we kept the journal. So it was really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, A little bit different than what I'm used to, but I wanted to kind of incorporate that because that's kind of how our relationship started. And I wanted to continue, you know, that same idea after we're, you know, through our engagement and then when we were married. So I thought it'd be cool to incorporate that, but I didn't know how. So Kate, like an absolute boss came up with an idea immediately and was like, well, how about this? I've done some things with other couples where they like write a, write a letter to each other and then read it to them face to face, like during a photo shoot or, you know, have it on video and it's turned out really cool. So what if I have her do that? And like, right at, right before you read yours, we say like, well, why don't you swap letters and like read what the other person wrote about you that or to it. you? That threw me. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, perfect. That worked out perfectly. So Sydney wrote hers on like a note, piece of notebook paper and I chose to write mine in the journal, obviously. Um, excuse me. I read Sydney's first, first her letter to me. It was so long. If I had known I was getting engaged to, I would have made that letter half. Yeah, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was so long. I was speed reading too because my parents were there uh-huh. videoing. And they were going to be walking up the steps with Sydney's parents on FaceTime so that they could see the engagement when they heard me, heard her start reading the letter, but I don't think they knew that we were swapping letters. So when they heard, um, I was afraid that they were going to hear me reading and be like, Oh, it's time. (laughs) So I was speed reading that letter. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, well, meanwhile, Kate is taking photos and texting them. Yeah. So she had everything under control. So yeah, then by the time you, so basically I didn't realize I was getting engaged too until I flipped the page and saw the second half of your letter. And then you got down on one knee and I was like, oh my, it's happening. It's <laughs> happening. And what's funny is when your parents came up the stairs, I saw them out of the corner of my eye, but I was like, uh, I thought they were complete strangers. Yeah. And I, I thought, almost scorched the earth <laughs> and when I, I saw them walk up early. <laughs> which is funny because I did not even recognize them. I thought they were two complete strangers. And I thought to myself, oh, I don't want these strangers to hear our letters. And it happened to be your parents. So it was totally fine. But just, I didn't notice until after I turned and the whole thing unfolded. But but honestly, it was perfect. And my friend joked, but basically I got to ask myself for my hand in marriage by reading your letter. But you did say it. You did say, will you marry well, me? Well, you didn't even make it to that part. I didn't. I was end. like crying by the end, so I didn't really finish the letter. And I didn't even realize, I, I didn't think I said yes because it was all such a blur from that point. And then I, I looked back at the video and I did say yes. And then I also forgot to put the ring on. <laughs> Things get weird. Um, but it was it was a perfect day and I, I think it happened – Exactly how I would want it to because I got all the photos I wanted and it was on video and I can relive it. And even just like your speech was so nice to have it written down because I think I hear from most girls that like they – everything was a blur. They don't even remember what the person said. They don't remember what they said. It's just like nice to have it always there when we want to refer back to it later down the road. A couple more things. Can you tell them what you changed her phone number and your phone as <laughs> to cover up? 
the lies. I, I changed uh, her number in my phone to the date of our engagement. And so it looked like it was 12 for 21. So it looked like one of those like automatic, uh, <laughs> UPS like auto text. sent. Yeah. Like a UPS text, or like a Walgreens, like notification. Oh uh, so that was pretty good. Of Which me. is like really good, but it's also so scary to think about the level of I mean, I felt the same way when I was making the video. I made you a, like a, a birthday gift and I had all your friends send videos to you. And I had to cover up so many texts I was receiving. So I was like, had my phone on do not disturb. I was changing people's names in my phone. So exactly yeah. what I did <laughs> on a larger scale, yeah. I might add. Multiple people texting me at once. So it's just crazy the levels of that you can get to be creative, to cover things up. Yep. But for a good cause, it's fine. And then even like the way that you would dodge curveballs, at the right one, even when we were driving there, my best friend texts, because you would ask her, basically my for my hand in marriage, <laughs> you asked her permission. Yeah. I which, texted two people outside of talking to her parents, and one was her little brother, uh, Nick, and her best friend, Casey. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I just felt like I... Number one, I didn't want her little brother to find out on social media. Like Nick's awesome, mm-hmm. and I wanted to let him know and you know give him one last chance to be like, nah, <laughs> this is not. I don't want my sister to marry you. Uh, no, but and then same with Casey. Like I obviously not as important as getting the approval of the parents, but it's her best friend, and, and like she's like my sister, and so. she's like your sister, and I love her. She's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she really cares about Sydney and care, and you know we really care about her. So I wanted to make sure that she was included as well. Yeah, <laughs> she. Um, so my best friend is not the best res- at responding to texts promptly, but when she responds, she'll send like five texts in a row. So she texted as we were driving to the engagement. I still didn't think it was happening, um, but you had to throw a curveball right at the end there because you had to be like, "Oh, why is Casey texting me?" And you said, "Oh, I reached out to her about your Christmas gift. That's why she's texting you back." text me back so i didn't i realized that i was like why is casey texting me and then i was like well i better come up with something because she's gonna look at she's gonna be like well let me see why and i said so i quickly said oh i forgot i texted her the other day about your christmas gift and like some ideas so like don't open that because she might have some ideas so smart so smart and terrifying all the same way um last thing i'll say on it is People ask me, like, what were you surprised? And I think I was prepared because we had talked about getting engaged and, like, probably it happening by the end of the year just because I like to just know things. But I didn't know when it was going to happen. I didn't know specifically when. And when it came time for this photo shoot, I was thinking, oh, if he was going to do it, this would be a really cute way for him to do it. But I had a pros and cons list in my head of, like, reasons why he's probably not doing it and reasons why this could be it. And by that end of the pros and cons list, by the day of, I realized – these, these are the, like, he wasn't doing it. Like, I wasn't getting proposed to. So I, that's why I was shocked because of all of the cover ups and the curveballs he threw, I think the web of lies that you created really helps you in creating this it's not amazing fun. secret. It's not, a, uh, <laughs> it's not a lifestyle I want to live. Yeah. It's, it's a lot it's of work, right? So much work. So, yeah, that's our engagement story. I just want to say for all of you that were so congratulatory and just so lovely with your messages and your text and all of the love and the comments even on the post, just like thank you so much for your support and it means the world to us. And, yeah, just thank you to the two or three people that said negative things. F off. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Enjoy your life, sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> um, Enjoy your miserable life. Exactly. But – um, thank you. And it, again, means so much to us. So before we move on to wedding advice, we have a couple questions that people asked that I want to just go through. Um, when did you know that I was the one? <laughs> I knew this one was going. I literally get asked this anytime question stickers get put up. But There's funny. like a handful of questions that people need the answer to. And you won't ever For answer For whatever <laughs> reason, they can't get past it. So when did you know? I think the year was, I'm just kidding. Um, I think it was the next morning after you had come to visit Mm. and we had just spent three months basically FaceTiming and talking on the phone and just texting. And that first time when you came to visit was kind of like a make or break. We've talked about it a number of times, but it was really a make or break moment. And I remember 
waking up the next morning and just thinking like, yeah, I don't think it's going to get any better than it is right now. So that was really, I think when, when I knew it was early. Yeah, it was very early. <laughs> that was early. Um, I think for me, it was more of when I realized that I loved you and that I asked you to be my boyfriend <laughs> because I, I mean, the whole time I was just like a slower burn with it. I, I think I was just like so scared because he was my first, he would have been my first boyfriend. And because I think deep down, I knew that whoever I was going to date first was going to end up being my husband. So it took me a little bit longer, but it was like, what, a month later, not even, it was like a few weeks after that, mm-hmm. that I asked you to be my boyfriend. So that was... No, month. it was literally that week. Was it that week? Because we went to... Oh, yeah. Then it was. We drove straight to... <laughs> it was that week then. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't going to fly to hang out with a boy without knowing I was really serious about him. And I think, yeah, I agree. Solid- it definitely was solidified once we were in person. And all the things I had hoped were true um, were true. And I could understand them as truth once we were actually in person together. So... Yeah, it's just a unique situation, but when you know, you know. Mm-hmm. And I agree with that. Um, what percent of planning will Nick be involved with in the wedding? How how involved do you want to be? What is the lowest percentage <laughs> that uh, that is allowed um, to be given? I just think the feeling overall of the wedding. I would like you to be, be involved. Like, our, I think there's people who keep bringing up like non negotiables of planning a wedding and what our like four or five non negotiables are. Those, especially, I would like you to be involved in. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like the location, overall feeling of the event. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> the usually vibe. weddings are a pretty happy occasion. I don't know what type of weddings you've been to, but <laughs> usually it's a pretty good feeling. Um, uh, the aesthetic. <laughs> okay. Don't know that word. So, so I'll be involved in the aesthetic. Um, I'd say like the music, mm-hmm. like whether we go with a band or a DJ, like I think that's a bigger decision. That's a bigger decision, not necessarily for us, but for everybody else. And I think probably the size, yeah, is going to be something that we color scheme. I don't care. Okay, so yeah, the aesthetics will be all me, and the nitty gritty details. But I think like the overall experience and how we want to feel on the day and what things matter to us is what you'll be the most involved with. I mean, I was talking to Ashley, and she said that Kevin. <laughs> fell asleep at one of the floral uh, appointments. I could see that happening. So that's his older brother. So if that's any sign of how that's going to (laughs) go. First look or traditional. I want you to cry. I'm pretty sure you asked me this the other night when I was like half asleep. (laughs) Yeah. Would would you want to have a first look where it's just us and the photographer and I come up behind you and you get to see me in my wedding dress first before I walk down the aisle? Or would you want to do the traditional I way? I think of- I would tr- do traditional. I think so like, too. I think the first look is, uh, I get it, like I, for like photography purposes. Mm-hmm. But I think it's kind of taken like a weird turn with like one of the best men <laughs> or one of the groomsmen being dressed up, which I think the I first think couple times hilarious. was yeah. hilarious. But like, I think it's being overdone now and it's kind of ruined the first look for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. And I think the only way you're getting a tear out of me during the ceremony uh-huh. as if, if it's during like a traditional. Yeah. He's very hard to make cry. <laughs> like if you get, if I see you before the ceremony. Yeah. It'll take away like it'll the magic take away, of it. Yeah. The problem is I'm going to be crying <laughs> the whole time. I, so. I anticipated that. Yeah. That's going to be a problem for me. So anything that will get him to cry will be my goal <laughs> in a good way. Weird goal for a wedding, but okay. <laughs> All right, let's get into advice. Um, So first one is pick three things that y'all care about, throw money to that and save money. Let it go. Let it go on all the rest. What would be like your three things? I think ours is band, Mm -hmm. location, and my dress. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's on you. Yeah, it is on me. But I'm willing to spend the extra money to look really good. I feel like my non-negotiables list is going to grow pretty much pretty long <laughs> um remember that it's your special day people will have a lot to say but it's all about you too do you think that we're gonna have very opinionated family members in this process no no i mean the truth comes out when you're planning a wedding though <laughs> um should have listened to myself and stress and stress the small details uh, i'll be taking that to heart um wish i would have had a coordinator day of to handle everything i want a coordinator and i also want someone to take my phone and record BTS. <laughs> oh my god! 
We can never have enough footage. Um, go on dates once a week and don't talk about the wedding, which I think is really good advice. Plus, I think we should be continuing to go on dates because... How are we supposed to not talk about the wedding? I know. But it's like how people like say go on dates and don't talk about your kids. For- oh, they're saying once you're on the date. Yeah. I thought they meant like, oh. <laughs> and just don't talk never about Never talk wedding. about yeah. it. <laughs> like, well, it's oh. <laughs> going to be difficult. Yeah. They're saying like at least plan like... Maybe afterwards. One dinner a week. Yeah. Number the RSVP cards for when people forget their name. That's a good one, I feel like. Yeah. Something Honestly, I, I need all the organization help <laughs> in general, but especially for this. Um, don't spend a fortune on a cake or save the date slash invitations. I really like cake, though. But I keep I, I keep noticing this at weddings. Like Ben's wedding, we didn't eat any cake. I might I don't remember eating cake. Um, most weddings, they're just like, there's no cake or it's just not a main event anymore. But I really love cake. So I might just have like a cake to take home it, with me. Make it a main event. It doesn't hurt to have a longer engagement, less stress, enjoy time with the fiance. How long do you want this to be a long engagement or do you want to go for it? I don't think I really have a say in that. So, <laughs> But ideally, what would you, I mean, when did you, when do you think that we would get engaged or get married? We're actually going to go look at venues over Christmas because we'll be home in Virginia Beach to see if like where where we want to have it. So I think once we look at venues and what's actually available, because it's actually scaring me for how many people have to reschedule in 2022 and 2023. So we'll look. Tip vendors, unexpected unexpected expense that skipped my mind adds up quick. Yeah. We're going to start a wedding fund. <laughs> Um, make an email address specifically for the wedding, which I think is genius. The one that we would share. So we are just we have it all in one place. Yeah. I also, how many email, you have one email address. You have two. I have work and personal. I've somehow managed to get, I have like five email addresses. And they're all doing the same thing. So I don't know so what happened. I know. And now like I'll email someone from a different address on accident. So then they'll start emailing that address. And I was planning on deleting that address, but now I'm going through things to that address. So I, I'm a mess. So I'll have six with the wedding. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, someone said, skip the wedding, buy a house. There's a whole show on Netflix that is dedicated to – there's a wedding planner and a real estate agent, and they're, they pick – one picks a house, obviously, and one picks a wedding venue and, like, plans the whole thing. And you have to only pick one on the show. And they go between – they get to see each sides of both, and they have to decide as a couple which one they would choose. If there was a choice, what would you pick? <laughs> I think we know. <laughs> you pick the house. If I were to do that, I would still have some type of a yeah, wedding. Yeah, I mean, there's still a, you still have like a ceremony, yeah. but maybe it's like it's not as crazy. Yeah, maybe it's just like you two, and then maybe you have a party or something with everyone. Like, yeah, like a much cheaper version. Which of. a lot of people have had to do that because of the pandemic anyway. And we've attended some of those, and though they were, they were a awesome. great time. Yeah, so, Ali and David's. I mean, that was yeah, so much fun. Um, do not make your bridesmaids spend over $300 for their dress. They'll wear it for one day. And as a former bridesmaid or as a bridesmaid many times, thank you for this. And I will strongly take this into consideration. <laughs> Ashley was telling me that her bridesmaids were Haley Page. I don't know what that, that was, means. It's like she's like a designer of wedding dresses essentially, but she's very well known. And I was like, oh, how much was that? She was like, I don't know. They probably hate me. Um, it's extremely exciting to you, but everyone else has their life going on. Lower expectations. I think lower expectations of other people, which makes sense because I think you can get really wrapped up in the things that you're doing in life, especially this time. I th- Yeah, I think they – the way I read this is like for the people you invite. Mm. Like if you're like dead set on having certain people there, like at the end of the day, you have to realize like, yeah, it's a very exciting day to, for us, but for them, it's just another wedding. Yeah. And like, regardless, really, of how close they are to us, unless it's like our parents and Mm -hmm. our immediate family, like everyone else, like even if it's our best friend, like it's just a wedding to them. So I get it. Do not skimp out on the photographer budget. All of my married friends preach this. We already got our photographer booked. Photographer already. (laughs) Some people said I have two photographers. So maybe she's got a good wreck. She probably does. The shorter the engagement, the easier it is to plan. So this is the opposite of what someone else said. But I can see both sides. Um, I could see how if you if the engagement's shorter, you are more inclined to get shit done mm-hmm. sooner. It's more like of quicker waiting. decisions, yeah. yeah, which almost would help me, I think. I agree. Because when I have too much time to obsess over something, I can't make a decision. Take time to go around and say hi to all of your guests while they're seated for dinner. I like that. Mm-hmm. So then we can just like – I want to eat too though. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm, no I'll I like be that, eating. Yeah. That'll be a priority. 
um, must have splurge items, dress, flowers, and late night pizza. We've gone to a few weddings recently where they've had Taco Bell at the end of the night, and it's such a quality addition. Yeah, it really uh, is. That will be in the budget to have some type of late night food. And it's funny because it's like an hour or two after you ate dinner, but you still want it. That's what people remember. I want it most of the time (laughs) throughout the day. I just don't get it. Even if you have it all budgeted out, save more than you think you need. Unplanned things come up last minute. I feel like this is with anything. Um, Private dinner for the two of you before joining your guests. Just a moment to connect. I like that. I like including like little moments where we can just be reminded of why we're doing this and mm-hmm. that it's a, it is essentially about us and our marriage. Um, your feelings will get hurt when people start declining invites to your events. Guard your heart. This is one I need to reread a few times because I get very um, butthurt about things or just well, I'm sensitive. Don't. I know. I won't. Well, I think you can look at it as you're saving money by them saying no. Well, not only that, but like <laughs> going back to that last one, like people have lives. Yeah. And their lives don't revolve around ours. Mm-hmm. And like if somebody declines the wedding, I'm not going to be butthurt about it. If if we feel strongly enough in our relationship that we invited them, mm-hmm. we should feel strongly enough to accept whatever reason why they can't yeah. attend the wedding. Like we should be comfortable in the fact that like it's nothing we did wrong. They just can't, they can't come. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Like I feel like people get too wrapped up in the wedding. Like- mm-hmm. I've been to some weddings where I can't even tell you the last time I talked to the bride or groom, mm-hmm. but like I've had friends get married who were, I didn't really meet them maybe till after their marriage or I just weren't, wasn't very close with them at the time of their wedding. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, we're like really close now. Yeah. So I think it's, I think you just have to be insecure secure enough in your relationship with the person who's declining the wedding. Mm-hmm. So you don't get your feelings hurt. Basically. I think that's great advice. Not advice, but getting a live painting of a part of your wedding is the best decision. I've seen these. Have you seen those on TikTok where yeah. they'll like set up a whole like canvas and they'll paint some part of the wedding, which I think is really beautiful, mm-hmm. which is a good idea. A good we'll, idea. we'll see. Play your first dance song at the end of the reception and dance to it again. <laughs> I may not be in any condition to be dancing by the end of the reception, <laughs> so we'll see. Um, it's not too early to start. Plan more now to allow for peace closer to the big day. So. I've already started. Yeah. <laughs> and if I started, I've just been looking at venues, which I, I literally did this morning. This <laughs> <laughs> Definitely take a few moments by yourself after the ceremony to soak in the moment. I've seen other people on TikTok do like a final dance with the groom and the bride right before they walk out to say goodbye, which I think is really, really lovely. Take a long honeymoon. Absolutely. I want to go for like three weeks. Okay. <laughs> so well, I'm just kidding. That's my entire vacation there. So <laughs> worth it. Um, prioritize hair and makeup. This one's for you. Those I feel were the most rare to find. Yeah, I will be doing multiple trials. Okay. <laughs> Write down what pictures you want done. Definitely we'll have a Pinterest board ready to go for that. Um, track your expenses on a spreadsheet to help you keep on on a budget. Honestly, this is life advice I need. So maybe the wedding will help me become a better adult. Just the whole planning process because I'm so bad with Excel spreadsheets. I would love to be that person that's like, I have a spreadsheet for everything and these are – I just am not that person and I need to learn. Um, pick a wedding – this one's my favorite. Pick a wedding scent. Every time you smell it, it will take you back. I'm a big scent person. And you, you know when you like walk into certain hotels and it has a scent or certain vacations or just certain memories are re- revolved around a scent? I think this is such a really unique, cool idea. I don't, idea. I don't know where to design a scent, but we'll see. We'll figure it out. Um, pick something sexy but comfy underneath. Winky face heart. So, so you, what are you going to wear? A jock strap? Morning tidies. Morning tidies. Wear a banana hammock. A bedazzled jock strap. <laughs> um, ask the venues about everything you want to do. A lot is actually an upgrade. Makes sense. Makes sense. Someone said it's like this is a business essentially and you just have to be aware that they are going to do whatever they need to to make money. And it's it tracks. If friends get mad for not being a bridesmaid, they were never a good friend. Mic drop. That's good one. This is a very – I mean there's movies and books about this. <laughs> the drama of being a bridesmaid and all the things around it. So, yeah, I mean I think it's hard because you like are friends, best friends with someone from like childhood but you disconnect. It's like hard when it comes to the, those decisions but – got to be cutthroat, I guess. It'll be interesting. Um, Don't plan for the wedding, plan for your marriage. I like this too. I think that's smart to also think about, think through that when we're taking time to like talk about how we want our wedding to feel. I think it's also important that we take time to 
talk about how we want our marriage to feel. Never give your florist the cost of your wedding because they want 10% of that cost to be flowers. Good insider advice. I like it. Don't listen to your future husband. Celtics green doesn't match the decor. <laughs> We're not having Bengals anything there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not exactly proud to be a Bengals fan, right? This is true. We'll find out again in a half hour when they play. Um, give your parents guidance a limit on guests they want on the list so they don't invite 75 friends. I hear this is an issue. Oh, yeah. That they just will like last minute throw a bunch of their friends on the list. It's like a big party. Which... Well, I mean, uh, a number of my parents' friends, um, their sons are were like my best friends growing up. So – they're going to be there regardless, yeah. but also like, yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> Don't plan for a bunch of desserts with cake. So much wasted. People like booze over cupcakes. Agreed. I had one wedding. There was like, they were bringing out wheelbarrows full of donuts. It was nuts. <laughs> it felt like there was like dessert falling from the sky. I had a great time. It's like I was just, yeah, I was just as hyped about the desserts as I was the booze, but I did I, feel like shit later. I'm big on there being enough alcohol, not because I'm an alcoholic, but I've been to weddings where it's like you're like an hour into the reception. They're like, sorry, we ran out of yeah. uh, whiskey or we ran out of beer. And you're like, so tequila? They're like, no, we have wine. We just have wine right now. And you're like, okay, well, I don't really yeah. drink that, yeah. but okay. And just enough bars so you have the, – the crowd can get spread out and there's not a line that forms. Ben and – Jess's was. That was perfectly done. There was like 600 people there, but there was never a line for the bar. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. There was a, awesome. yeah. So you never want to be in a line. Um, focus on the experience. Nobody really talks about, cares about the program slash centerpieces slash centerpieces years later. Completely agree. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to have an issue Their with cell phones and purses are going to be the centerpieces. True. Don't show anyone your dress. Okay. Noted. <laughs> Good luck. I know because everyone everyone asks. Like everyone asks about the ring. They want to see it. Everyone asks about the dress. But I think I'm going to try and stick to this rule because I have heard that it their opinion or the, even the way that they react to it will affect how you feel about it and it should never affect that. You should just stick to like what you felt in the moment and what you saw for yourself. Um, don't overdo it by buying gift for bridesmaids. Budget went out of control. <laughs> We're hating on the bridesmaids. <laughs> Um, that's it. There's plenty more advice I'm going to share on Instagram, but I wanted to share those with you guys just because I thought they were very helpful and they kind of helped me shift where I'm putting my focus to, at least at first, and things that we can kind of refer back to when we get into the stress of the planning. But I think overall theme of it was like it's about us and what we want and how we want it to feel and how we want to celebrate our love on that day. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, let's wrap this up with – we're releasing this episode on the week of Christmas, and it will be right before New Year's. Um, it's been an amazing year, 2021. A lot of things change and a lot of uh, some ups and downs, but what do you think the biggest takeaway and your biggest lesson that you learned in 2021 is? So my biggest takeaway, I mean, that's a good question. My biggest takeaway um, is probably, you know, life is short and um, life is too short to go through life angry and holding grudges and not seeing the people that you love. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I think you're at it. Whoever listens to your podcast, I lost one of my best friends from college earlier this year and that was tough. And he was a guy who, you know, was literally my best friend in college, you know, lived together for three years, first three years of college. And then, you know, after we graduated, we kind of lost touch a little bit. So, you know, if you have people like that in your life who you haven't talked to in a while, make sure you reach out to them. Um, you just never know, you know, when you're when you're not going to have that opportunity anymore. So I think the biggest that's probably the biggest takeaway, for, at least from this year. Yeah. But if you know anything about my, you know, my story with health issues and whatnot, it's you know that's that's always been my biggest takeaway. But it makes it uh, it reminds you when you go through something like that, it reminds you to, you know, remember how fragile life is and how quickly it all can change. Yeah. I think that's huge. Um, 
2021, I feel like what I did this year was lean into just like my heart and what felt right to me. And I think a lot of times in the past, I didn't do that or I felt like I wasn't allowed to do that or I had fear about doing that for what other people would think about those decisions or I felt what I felt was like the right thing to be doing versus what was right for me. And I think what I learned this year is like when I lean into the things that feel right and I know that deep down are right for me, don't worry about what other people are going to think because everyone is going to have opinions and everyone's going to say the things that you're afraid that they're going to say about you, but you have to be true to yourself and what is right for you and only you can know that. So I think what I learned is like to do that more and to be just to lean into those decisions and lean into those decisions and kind of dig my feet in when I know that they're right for me and um, not ha- be concerned with how other people are going to feel about that because it doesn't matter. Um, it's your life and other people's opinions shouldn't affect how you live it. And I think that was a big lesson I had to learn this year and I'm still always taking that in and trying not to get affected by people's opinions or thoughts or comments or anything like that. But I think the less that I care about that and the more I just trust myself and where I'm at and what I need for myself, the better things always end up. So that's my biggest takeaway for now for 2021. Um, Nick, what do you hope for 2022? How do you want the year to feel for you? What are your Um, like, not necessarily resolutions, but what are your intentions for 2022? um, Making it through this wedding planning process (laughs) in a single piece. I think it'll be fun. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I obviously my hope for 2022 is that we get married in the, in 2022. <laughs> really? Yeah. Don't you okay. want to get married within a year? Yeah. Isn't that when most people get married after they get engaged? Depends. Not necessarily. Um, hopefully that happens. I mean, I think we're getting older and yeah, if we want to start having some babies. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I think it'll be a really fun year. Um, as far I, as hopes, I mean, I still are goals. I still have a few weeks. So if you could just give me that time, I will come back with a, an answer. Okay. Um, I think my hope and intentions for 2022 is to lean in to love and just to really enjoy the year and try and keep my heart open and just lean into the things that make us happy and bring joy into our lives. And I think it's going to be a really amazing year of celebration, which is awesome. We, I mean, we're lucky to be able to get to do that. So I'm excited for this year. And I also just want to try some new things. I want to push myself in different directions. I want to learn tennis. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I just want to stay open to any opportunities that can come because I've learned again from last year and from other years that the more I do that, the most amazing things can happen and come from that. Amazing so. things. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's all for us. I hope that you guys have a very happy holiday. Um, Merry Christmas if you're celebrating. Happy Hanukkah, all the things. Happy New Year. Um, we're sending love from us to wherever you are. And just thank you for listening. I hope that you continue to do so. Please share this episode with a friend, a loved one. And give us some good five stars on uh, Apple and like that podcast so that we continue growing it into 2022. Thanks for being here. Do you enjoy it? Thanks for being here in our home. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know where else I'd be. Thanks for asking me to marry you. You're welcome. Thanks for saying yes. Amazing. Well, happy new year, guys. We'll see you in 2022. Bye.